Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. Well, this problem was inspired by Dr. Peam. I will share the link to his video down below. All right, so we have one over X minus one over Y equals one over X plus Y. And we are supposed to find Y over X from here. So how do we solve for Y over X? We're going to simplify this. We're going to manipulate this equation and then see if we can get y over x from here. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Let's make a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply by y here and I'm going to multiply by x here. So now on the left hand side, the common denominator seems to be y times x or x times y. And the numerator is going to be y minus x divided by xy. And on the right hand side, I have what I have. Now, this is a good time to cross multiply. So we're going to go ahead and multiply these and those and set them equal. It might be beneficial to write the x plus y as y plus x so that you can see the pattern because we do have a difference of two squares here. Remember, when you multiply y plus x by y minus x, you get y squared minus x squared. And that equals xy because we have one on the other numerator. So now I want to put everything on the same side and I want to get y over x. So y squared is a good way to start it. Let's put uh, x, y on the left. Let's subtract it, but let's also write it in the middle like this. I want to keep the x squared and y squared at the end. Okay, like this. Great. Now from here, I'm supposed to solve for y over x and that's an easy task to do. So what are we supposed to do here? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you two methods here. Maybe um, you can compare and contrast. A lot of times it's good to know more than one solution method. So the first way I'm going to uh, show you is setting the y over x equal to something. Since I'm solving for y over x, it makes sense if I set something like this. Let y over x equal u. And you know that u is a good variable. y equals ux. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute this into my equation. And always remember that my goal is to solve for u. Okay, great. So if you replace y with ux, ux squared minus x times ux minus x squared equals zero. And here we get u squared x squared minus u x squared minus x squared equals zero. Now we can factor out x squared and that gives us u squared minus u minus one equals zero. Now this problem is going to have a really nice flavor. You can tell me what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but we've done this in, re in another video recently and we talked about it, I think, in great detail. Anyways, so this equation has interesting roots. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But notice that we have two options from here, either x squared equals zero or u squared minus u minus one equals zero. Now, what does this imply? If x squared equals zero, then x needs to be zero. Is that possible? Let's take a look. Look at the original problem. You see that x cannot equal zero. Maybe I should say that at the beginning, my bad y should not equal zero, and x plus y should not equal zero. Those are all not allowed. So that is not possible. Then what is that supposed to mean? That leaves us with one option, maybe two options, one with two options. So this implies u squared minus u minus one equals zero. And if you solve this equation by using the quadratic formula, you get something like this. Negative b, which is 1, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1. Great. And guess what? From here, you don't get complex solutions. Don't get too excited. It's going to be real for reals. Okay. I love real solutions. Well, I, that doesn't mean I don't like complex solutions and I hate them, but I lean more towards the real solutions. Okay. So now 1 plus 4, that's a 5. And hopefully by this time you recognize what this is. Let me not tell you again what this is. You let me know what it is. So we get two solutions. U equals one plus, so I can just separate them. U equals one plus root five over two, which is a really nice number, has very many interesting properties. We just talked about it. And the other one is one minus root five over two. Obviously, this is a negative solution. The first one is a positive solution. So this equation has a positive and a negative solution, which is perfectly fine because that is fine. Okay, great. So this is the first method that I was going to talk about. And then I want to introduce the second method, obviously. And they're not very much different, but I think it's a really nice approach. So let me go ahead and copy what we have here. We have y squared. Let me rewrite that. 
we have y squared minus xy minus x squared equals zero. So here's my second method. Okay. Second method. My second method basically involves some algebraic manipulations. Since x and y cannot equal zero here, I can just go ahead and divide both sides by x or y, but how about dividing both sides by x squared? Yes, let's do it. Now, you might be asking at this point, like, why is he dividing by x squared? You'll see in a little bit. If I divide zero by that, it's gonna become zero. Now here, the reason why I divided that is if you separate these terms, you're gonna get something super nice. Of course, this is gonna be a one, and you're gonna get the following. X cancels out with one of these, and then we get y over x quantity squared minus y over x minus one equals zero. And yes, that's right. You got a quadratic equation in y over x. So from here, you can just directly solve for y over x. I mean, you can also substitute, like if you replace y over x with k or u, you pretty much uh, use the same method, but I'm just gonna write the solutions directly because we're looking for y over x and can be written as negative b one plus minus the square root of b squared one plus four, as you know from before, divided by two. So y over x can be written as one plus minus root five over two. And this is the second method. Even though they are very similar, I just wanted to share with you the alternative for this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.